Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here on uh, week seven of our course. Uh, we're we're on uh, yeah the seventh week, uh, and so good to have each of you um, stick on and be here. And uh, lovely that um, um, you know there have been questions that have been coming up. And uh, you know the way that learning has taken place is is awesome. Also, welcome to the e-learning students as well. Thank you for the way that you all are involving yourself. You know, through through learning um, uh, through a different platform, but it's so encouraging to see um, everyone working together. Shall we just start with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness and your It is your grace that leads us day by day. Thank you for bringing us to another morning of class. Lord, we uh, submit ourselves before you, even as we hear um, different ways and um, methods of how we bring people to you to restore them back to your image. Lord, we pray that you will give clarity and understanding to our minds and to what is being uh, taught and heard. Father, we pray that you will help to bring all of this for your purposes and plans. Lord, we pray for um, each person on the call, each person who is watching uh, later, Father, we just pray that uh, your presence and your guidance uh, is with each one of us. Thank you once again. We look to you, Lord, for a fruitful morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so good morning once again. We're at uh, week seven of our class and uh, <clears throat> we have been slowly picking up pace with uh, what we're learning. Uh, when we started off with Christian counseling, understanding what biblical counseling is, looking at principles and slowly looked at what kind of counseling relationship um, we need to build, what are some of the attributes that we build through a counseling relationship. We looked at certain attitudes that are important for a counselor to hone as they enter into this ministry. And uh, last week, we began with the uh, structure of counseling. How do we progress from beginning to end? And we looked at one part of it last week. Um, uh, so we looked at three stages. So we said the first stage was self-exploration. The second stage is understanding. And the third stage is action. We looked at um, exploration. Um, so you know, like always, can I open it to the to the class to uh, quickly help with a, a recap um, to understand how much, you know, has been retained, has been recalled, has been revised, all of that. So opening it up to you for uh, certain thoughts that we we picked up last week and uh, just for us to refresh our brains and our minds before we take on from where we left. So open to the class. Anybody would like to quickly recap what we did last week? Maybe two, one or two people. This is the hard part of class, isn't it? And uh, Shri Kumar said 10 basic life, okay, life areas, okay? All right, so in exploration, we said, so what is exploration? Self-exploration is is what what is that phase? What happens in that phase? Ma'am, identify the problem. Okay, so yes, you're identifying the problem. You're also exploring um what what is what are other areas or or having a deeper understanding of the individual as well as the problem so that's what you do in as part of it okay so as part of that uh, through the entire 
uh, through these through the sessions you're also understanding other life areas that's what uh, Sri Kumar had written based 10 basic life areas you are looking at the other life areas of an individual and you will focus on maybe some life areas that are specifically um, important to the present to the problem to what the person has uh, is is bringing about as a problem okay so that's good so that's what we said you know if we divide it just for our academic understanding there is an assessment and what's the second part what's the second part that you do just as you assess the second part is exploration first yeah, so in exploration, we said the first thing you do is to assess. What is the second thing? Uh, it's there on the first page 24, the first second line that you see. OK, uh, yeah, so you yes, you identify wrong beliefs, but it comes under identification of the problem. OK, so you are mm -hmm. identifying what the problem is. And one of the first things that you would do is first of all we said you will check on to see if there are any physical problems that is contributing to the difficulty of the counseling like awesome. remember we spoke about dennis and we said you know he came with aggression and he came with um you know uh, behavior in in college that was uh, that that was varied from the normal so first thing you would check to see is there any any kind of a physical issue that may be contributing to that okay then what did we say we said the first and foremost thing before we identify wrong beliefs what do you do before that there's something you do before that what do you do before that or you remember like i said this is not like one step from another you know but it it all uh, integrates one to another but what is what is before you look into beliefs what would you identify what would you help to draw out from the counselee first willingness and response uh, willingness and response okay yeah. uh, okay so um, all right okay Chaya. yeah personalizing the problem comes way later much later before that is when a person comes with you with a to, with a problem, the first thing that you need to do is to help to clarify the emotions that the person is feeling. Remember, we said un, um, untapped emotions or or if unidentified or unacknowledged emotions definitely causes significant distress, right? So they they come with a problem. First, you see to check to see if there is any kind of a physical issue. And then at the same time, you are um, helping them to draw out and clarify the problem. So remember, we spoke about Dennis. Now, if, if we remember Dennis's uh, story, if we are going to delve straight away into what his issue is without really understanding what he's feeling you'll probably take him for his face value and you will you know you may only address that he's having a problem with alcohol you may only address that he has a problem with college but it is only as he is really sharing and drawing uh, bringing out and venting out his feelings are you able to see a lot more that you understood at a later point of time like what he feels towards his father what his specific dreams are what his aggression is all about all of that you understand only when you give the counselee a space to vent out their emotions that they feel they need to come in touch with their emotions now that is a very very important part of counseling remember that um uh, the thoughts yes contribute a lot but the the individual is not going to straight away come in and tell you hey these are the thoughts that i'm thinking what seems biggest and most evident to them is the kind of emotion that they are feeling the feelings come out very very strongly so in counseling the 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 constant thing that you do and i'd say constant it's not the first and the last it's the constant thing that you do is to continue to help clarify those emotions and those feelings and that's 
that's very very significant in in counseling and you know um, so so even in your responses your responses reflect that you have understood or you're helping them come to a point of feeling now once you are able to draw out those feelings then you are in a better position to go on to the next thing that that you know Sri Kumar you mentioned is to identify those beliefs or those wrong thoughts or, or you know what is it that that is um, uh, that seems to be that they seem to be struggling with there again before that you need to help the uh, the counselee to identify the problem behaviour. Now, in this case, it is alcohol that's become the problem behaviour. Or remember, we spoke about the goal-oriented behaviour, right? So he needs to begin to see, hey, my alcohol is a problem. This is the problem that I am experiencing. And to find goals that, uh, to examine those goals, uh, that that lie behind it. So why am I getting into this problem behavior, which is alcohol, and and the goal is is you know to get to cope with my disappointment. Remember we spoke about that to bring the goal as well as the problem behavior in together. So you identify the problem behavior, which in Dennis's case is the alcohol. What is the goal? Is uh, you know his coping with with the disappointment that he's feeling. Okay, so he's taking to alcohol in order to get a rid of the disappointment. Then is when you will go to. So when he, when he gives you that kind of an understanding, that's when you explore more about those wrong beliefs. What is it? Um, what what are some of those thoughts uh, or those strategies that he uses to deal with the problem? So there you found out the uh, negative kind of beliefs and emotions that he have. It's only then that you help to personalize, right? Now, if Dennis were to come to you right to the first part, you know about all of his initial details, and you ask him, you know, how do you how do you think you contribute? How do you um, you know, in, in words, in counseling jargon, you'll say, how will you personalize your problem? Or what you're trying to say is, how do you think you contribute to your problem? He will say, I don't contribute to my problem. My father is the one who contributes it. My principal is the one who contributes it, contributes to it. That's because we will reach a place like that if we have not done this adequately, if we have not helped to clarify these feelings, if we have not helped for him to identify what is you know, the issue or the behavior. What is the goal that leads to the behavior? What are the thoughts that lead to the behavior? Now, once we've done that adequately, then is a place where the, where the counselee is ready to personalize the problem and say, okay, now let me look at what it is that, that makes me uh, uh, do this, right? Because the minute that you are going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, you, you, to, to pinpoint and say there is something that you are doing that's wrong, you know, he may feel uh, there is a there is a high tendency to make him feel invalidated about what else is happening around. He, you as a counselor, will become just like the other people in his life the principal, the father, who keeps been pointing that, you know, you are the problem. It's because you are like this is the problem. So that is something, uh, what does counseling do? Counseling helps to draw out these things so that they come to a place of understanding that they, that first and foremost, they're the ones who may have a very strong part to play in the problem. So personalizing the problem comes way after all of that. And then is to personalize the problem and the new goal. So what is the new goal? It is to the 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 new goal is to is to look at how can I deal with my disappointment or how can I deal with my anger because I have understood that it is my anger or it is the way that I think that's making me resort to alcohol. So you are personalizing the problem and bringing about a new goal. So that's that's what the first entire uh, uh, part of it was. Uh, is that clear? Is that clear? I hope. So I've, I've just kind of crushed what we learned last week into a small thing, but. Can we move on or is there anything that you all have a doubt on? Because we need to at least have this framework in mind as to how this goes about. 
because otherwise we may we may come to a place of getting stuck very very easily okay so is this clear or would anybody like any more clarification or do you say that you know it's still very very hazy and confusing in my head i need a little bit more or one more set of explanations so uh, um, is, is there anyone else who may require that or can i move on okay so i've got yes Shri Kumar, go ahead yeah you thank you yeah, yeah pastor i just want to know this um like um, the identifying the problem behavior is it uh, is it needed uh, multiple uh, multiple time we have to sit with him to understand it um or um, mm -hmm. can we identify this problem with in that you no know, um in in one meeting itself or it, it is it a like is it a long process to identifying the problem because as you said this is the foundation to to find that man's you know the root to find the root cause of that problem so right. does it take a lot of time uh like to understand his uh, family background his background or spiritual mm. background all these things so i just want to know that hmm. okay so so um uh, excellent question so let let me answer that uh in in the best way possible now let's Let's take Dennis and remember Beth's question last time, right? So Beth mentioned, uh, if you all remember, she said the way that when she looked at the problem, she analyzed that it's not, it may not only be an issue of career, but it also could be an issue with his father, uh, with the relationship that he's father. And if you remember, we discussed that for an academic purpose, we have just taken one um one line of an issue okay but that does not mean there can be multiple problem behaviors so in dennis's case uh, we have focused only on one problem but as you um, uh, take time to talk to him and converse with him you may identify more than one problem or you may identify that right in the beginning or Maybe the counselee does not talk about anything with regard to his father. He may say, you know, I don't want to discuss anything about that. We will look at it later. And he's just come to you with the issue of his, maybe let's say his career path. But as you keep going, there may come a time that he opens uh, his relationship out with his father through maybe some conversation. And that's how you identify maybe a second problem. So in it, through your sessions, it can happen either at the first meeting or very close to, um, uh, you know, when you're coming to the end, you may identify the second problem or, uh, you know, in, in the middle, you may identify a third problem. So what in your in your understanding, it, it is helpful for you to pick these problems out and place it i mean you know have an understanding that there are you are dealing with maybe two three things together okay and try if they, some of them maybe you know maybe inter uh, intermingled like like dennis's problem is intermingled there is there is an issue with regard to his career there is an issue with regard to his father there is an issue with regard to his own self esteem so you've identified three problems then and there itself OK, so you may need to integrate this together and work on that. So um, maybe in your first couple of sessions, you may really not identify more than one. But it is a possibility. It can come about another time. And that becomes another goal, you know, and, and that becomes maybe another process of dealing dealing with the with the problem. Shri Kumar, I hope that. Uh, um, yes, possible. I hope that answers it. Yeah, yeah thank okay. you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, Samuel. Yeah, I. You know, I would have loved to. When what he said is, uh, you know, could we do a role play? Um, in theory, this makes sense, but you're wondering how it works practically. Now, I wish we could do that, but you know, what generally happens is because um, in a role play, you know, it 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 can it can get extremely extended. But maybe what what we could do is probably. Um, we can try some parts of it together and uh maybe can let's do this but i will need i will need uh i will need a counselee for that 
you know so i can i i can um work oh you great i have i have a taker <laughs> samuel i hope you're my taker samuel yeah? yeah yes 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 oh okay great okay so what what we can do is uh, we we'll we'll try and just work through the exploration part of it we're not going to go into anything beyond that and um, because of time constraints we could make it uh, uh, samuel what i'd suggest to use choose one just one probably when I mean but choose one issue is something that uh, that you know may may not require too much of an exploration because otherwise you know we may not be able to get into further details of that. So maybe just one simple problem and uh, I can demonstrate as to how uh, that can be done. So shall we do that? I'm, I'll be more than happy to do that. I think that is a that's a, even if we have to quickly crunch up the next part, but we could do that. Yeah, great. OK, so Samuel, would you like to think of uh, uh, an issue? Uh, sure. You're on the spotlight, Samuel. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind uh, because okay. I, I see the value of uh, learning in this so much. Great. Uh, OK. Yeah. OK, so shall we start? Yes. Yes. OK. Um, all right, Samuel, uh, thank you for for volunteering to discuss something. I'm sure it has taken you some form of courage to discuss this here with us. How can I help you, Samuel? Um, Pastor. Uh, Samuel, can you give me a minute? I need to get a paper. Please yes, give me a minute. Yes, sure. Yes, Samuel, go ahead. Um, so, um, Pastor, my, um, so, I don't feel like going to church anymore. Um, my parents go to the church and um, everyone goes to church and uh, I haven't been going for quite a while. Um, and um, I, I just, I just do, I have, gone to a couple of churches i just don't believe in going to church anymore i i have a personal relationship with god but 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 i i'm i'm not liking everything within a church in the context of a church and um if i've stopped going to church but this is causing a lot of uh rift between my parents um my friends uh, my community members so um, I'm especially. I think the big problem for me is uh, my parents get uh, are getting a lot of. Um, so my my dad uh, is um, he he holds quite a respect. Like he's the elder at the church, um, mm -hmm. so uh, he he holds quite a respectable position. So, um, but mm -hmm. my not going to church, I think um, he's he's facing um, problem at the church, even to a point where he's considering of stepping down uh, from his uh, eldership. Um, but I don't, I mean, I, I can pretend, but, uh, and I've done that sometimes, but um, I just I just don't feel genuine. Uh, and I, I feel more um, guilty of being in the church uh, because I'm not willing to, rather I would just be at home and, uh, and mm. uh, pray to God in my own way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so Samuel, what I hear you saying um, is that um, you feel a sense of dilemma because you feel on one hand, you have a lot of mixed emotions with what is going on. So you feel guilty for a couple of things. One is for the way that um, your decision is impacting your family. Uh, and uh, so much so that you know you feel guilty that he may need to step down for from his leadership because of the choice you're making. Mm -hmm. You feel also uh, uh, you feel torn and guilty. To I think you feel a lot more torn because you want to be genuine and you don't want to be pretentious while you are at church. Um, you also feel trapped 
because you would you feel you can you need to sit at home and and you know just worship god and you don't want to go to church for uh I'm sure there are certain reasons for that, and that's what I'd like to explore. And uh, you feel very torn at this point of time in making a right decision. Did I hear that right? Um, not exactly torn or dilemma, Pastor. I think I've kind of hmm. made up my mind that um, I okay. won't go to a church till I um, find a church that I f- think I'll I'll feel more. I mean, I'll I'll not. But but the 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 two churches that are near my places, uh, I've tried going there, and, and uh, like you mentioned, I feel a little pretentious, and I I can't help but uh, be very critical of everything that I see there, um, mm-hmm. from the way the service is conducted to the people that I mm-hmm. encounter at church, and I come back feeling more resentful uh, mm-hmm. so so i've kind of made up my mind that i'll not go so so i i don't think i'm in a dilemma but uh but i definitely okay. feel bad for my father who's undergoing this lot of pressure and heat and uh i tried talking to him uh but uh like i, 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 I I'm, I'm like i don't want to hurt his feelings also too much uh, but um, i'm not able to sort of make him understand like he doesn't understand um why like when he he can fit in and and it's this like mm-hmm. uh, it's the same worship the song um mm-hmm. and when he can connect so much he, he can't understand like how like he um in 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 so much so like the conversation goes where um i think it goes uh, to my father doubting uh, my faith which mm-hmm. then I become more defensive, and then uh, so it mm-hmm. it doesn't. Every time we have this conversation, it, it's not very productive. But uh, mm. it um, it becomes me not being able to explain to him, and he thinking that I'm backsliding or something like that. Mm. So, mm-hmm. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. So, so what I heard you saying is you are pretty sure about uh about not wanting to go to a church that's not the dilemma so uh, you know i think i think we've understood that okay a side note to all of us so what what are, what are we doing here right now is that we've identified what the problem is um, so when he initially when when uh, samuel initially spoke it almost looks like he doesn't want to go to church right and we may think that that's the problem but he's very well clarified that that's not the problem the problem is what he's facing with his father okay right so so i i parked the the earlier problem and we are going to go on to the second one shade you have an observation question here uh, it's more like an observation so i think the the, the way we go is we start from the obvious and mm-hmm. then we look for that window that takes us into the real issue am i getting Correct. you right now Yes, yes. And you can do that only when now what what did I do is I raised certain um, feelings that Samuel's going through. I said, you appear to be in a dilemma, you appear to be trapped, you appear to feel guilty. So you know, you see how he clarified and said, No, I'm not in a dilemma. I am very sure I don't want to go to church. The issue is with my father do you see that so if i had not clarified that reflected that feeling or brought that back to him i wouldn't have been able to identify that now since i've identified it i'm going to move away that which is not relevant and looking at that which is relevant i hope i hope that's clear up until now right very okay. clear very clear yeah can okay. i also yes? can i also make an observation um yeah. you know so uh um so something that i'm learning is uh like I, I'm thinking, like you know, as a counselor, I have to say the right words. Um, like you know, you're feeling this. So what I understand is you're feeling dilemma, pretentious, and all. Um, and then uh, when the counselee comes back saying, "No, I'm not feeling dilemma." So as a counselor, probably I, I would like, like I, I messed up. You know, I, I, I told something wrong. But I, I, what I'm learning is that you are not shaken by, uh, and you're admitting that okay, dilemma is not the thing. I, I. I thought it was dilemma, but it's not, and so I'll I'll, I'll take that off. So so you're not shaken by me refusing uh, refusing to acknowledge that it's it's dilemma. So 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 that's 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 something that I'm picking up. 
Yeah. So I think what we should understand is you may not always be spot on to identify what they're feeling. And that's why you're having this exchange of communication. Right. And 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 it's only through that that you clarify a lot more as to what they're going through. So don't I think it's perfectly OK to not understand the issue, but to keep clarifying so that you've you've got that. OK. All right, so we'll move on. Okay, so um, yes, so I what I what I heard you saying, uh, uh, Samuel, is that your your uh, uh, your issue or, or the struggle is more with how you are dealing with your father and and the the struggles that are coming uh, as a result of this church issue with your father. You said, um, you know, you kind of feel that your father probably looks. Um, uh, doubtful about one your own salvation and whether you are backsliding and you have attempted in very many very many ways to help him understand but you've kind of been unsex unsuccessful in that right okay now uh, Samuel what I want to understand from you is what are you hoping to derive from our discussion here what is it that you what kind of a um, uh, I'd say a hope or an outcome. Are you are you hoping to derive as you and I discuss this? So uh, I've thought of this, Pastor. So uh, one is, I think, um, I don't know if you could probably talk to my dad, uh, and or someone could talk to him. Like I don't know who could make him understand. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but if you could talk to him and uh, probably help him understand, so that is, I think, that would um, make at least resolve the constant tension that we are having at home. So that is one. But the other thing also, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, I'm beginning to think that something could be wrong with me also that, um, mm -hmm. that you know, I'm, 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 I'm so critical about uh, mm. church folks. I, I've tried to, and, and I feel it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little hampering to my own spiritual journey where um, you know, I, I want to be loving and I want to be kind. Um, and, and I've been praying about it, but I can't help but be critical about uh, my church leadership and other folks at church. So, so I think that is also a big problem that I'm, I'm internally. But uh, the more pressing, the immediate one is uh, this uh, tension that I'm having with my dad. I just want someone to talk to my dad and mm -hmm. help him mm -hmm. understand my point of view. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Samuel, I do see you're feeling almost, uh, you know, um, quite stuck and, you know, you really want some kind of a release and you feel that if someone were to talk to your dad, things would get better. Uh, so I and, and I also, um, uh, you know, noticed that you said that you feel that, that probably there's sometimes you... Um, uh, you know, you're looking within yourself and you feel that probably you've got to take note of of your critical spirit or whatever, whatever you're going through. So I'd like to deal with that uh, after maybe I just understand this. What do you think would be an outcome if someone were to talk to your dad? How different would it be from the way you have spoken to your dad, Samuel? Um, I think I, so when I talk to him, um, I don't know, it, it almost like, because he's also in the leadership, I maybe, you know, I end up attacking him a little bit. That's why he gets offended easily mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because he knows that I don't, um, I don't, uh, I'm not very fond of the church leadership and how, to, how they do things. So, so that, but uh, someone, a senior pastor or, or a pastor like coming from them, probably he would not, uh, be offended, like he would not take it as a personal attack. I, that's that's what I think. If somebody else mm -hmm. talks, I mean, uh, I can't imagine my friends or my spouse or anyone talking because it would still, you know, there's there's the age gap and um, mm -hmm. and uh, and all of that. So and and I don't uh, have anyone senior who could uh, talk to him and make him understand. So I'm I'm thinking just. Just a different person, someone elderly, someone at a, at from leadership mm -hmm. position would would uh, help him see that uh, that I mm -hmm. that um, that it's it's not 
my spiritual journey, but it's more uh, my own struggle of being uh, critical about the church and, and not wanting to be pretentious. Uh, mm. and, 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 and this uh, feeling of bitterness that I got, like I, I'm, I'm going to church, uh, so I'm thinking that I'm going to church for fellowship, for communion, um, for brotherhood, uh, but I'm coming back with opposite feelings, and 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 uh, and. Um, but my father thinks uh, it's uh, it's my spiritual backside. So so just uh, for him to be able to understand that. Hmm. Okay. So what I hear you saying is that you would like to involve somebody else. One is because you f you feel that your dad um, uh, senses that every time you're be, being critical about the church, it's more like an attack towards him too, right? Yes. And ra rather you would like him to see that it is not a personal um, offense that you have towards your, your father, but then it's something that is more personal for you, something that's more uh, a journey for you, that, that this is a journey that you need to take. And you feel you're not able to de-link this to Every time this conversation comes up, it becomes more more personal than it, it seems to be more individual. Is that right? Did I hear that right? I, I think so. I think so, Pastor. Okay. All right. So what you'd like to communicate to your father is that that your choice of not wanting to go to church or to, to the specific churches that he'd want you to go has nothing to do with the way that you see him or, or the way that you disregard him or disrespect his authority or his leadership. It has nothing to do with that. It has, some, it has a lot to do with your own spiritual growth and your own spiritual journey. That's what you would like to communicate to your father. Did I hear that right? Yes. Um... Yes, Pastor. Um, definitely, uh, but more than um, yeah, I don't know if my speech, but 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 my view of the church. Uh, my, okay. Yeah. Okay. So w what we're what we're trying to uh, get here is that it has it doesn't have much to do with your relationship with your father. Your choice does not, doesn't have anything to do with your relationship with your father. It is it's something that you are personally needing to deal with, right? So we pick right. really that. Right. Okay. Right. All right. And you feel that someone as an outsider would be able to communicate that much better than you would be able to because you are so emotionally involved and he's so emotionally involved with you. OK, so so that's something I, I suppose, Samuel, that we could explore over time. Um, but I'd like to come back to what you spoke about, you know, the, the fact of um, that you wouldn't you would like that your father sees this objectively. And you would also like to come across to your father with a respectful and a non-critical way, right? So that he doesn't see it as something like a personal issue or a personal attack. How is it, uh, what do you think, um, or what behavior or what words or what in you do you feel that you, that, that you bring out that makes your father feel the way that he does? that you're being critical of him or disrespectful of him, what either what words or what actions or, or what is it that you bring out that makes him feel the way that he does? No, um, every One time... second, just a minute, Samuel, just a minute. So what am I doing right here? Can anyone identify what am I doing right here? Understanding the feeling of uh, the Samuel. What did I say? I said, from your, uh, you know, what what about you makes your father feel this way? What are we doing here? Exploring. Identification. No. You are, I am helping to personalize the problem. Okay. Right? So what am I saying here? I'm saying, 
Samuel, what in your behavior, what that you're doing, is it that's making your father feel the way that he is, right? So I've personalized the problem. I said, okay, because he said, you remember, he said, I sometimes may be critical. My father feels that I'm being critical and disrespectful of him. So I've come to a place, brought him to personalizing the problem. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Samuel. Okay. Yeah. Um... I mean, I think that, that that's such a great question. Uh, so it's it's making so. Um, so I'm going back to role play mode. <laughs> uh, um, so Pastor, every time uh, we come back from church, and then um, I I try to keep quiet, uh, but we end up talking, and I end up pointing out. Mostly, I end up pointing out all the things that went wrong. Especially in our church, we have uh, so we have this um, upper balcony kind of thing, and I normally sit in the balcony area, and mm -hmm. and uh, I see all young kids sit there, and all of them are in their set. Like so, this is like the youth of the church, and and they are not interested. the The format that the church follows, it's uh, there's like a lot of announcements, and and um, and uh, the people who even come for sermon and preach it's not one constant person it's like different person all the time and and it it's it doesn't like especially in the back like in in in, in when i look down the, the the seniors the elders uh they sit in the front few rows and they somehow seem to be engaged but um it's just it's just for me i feel uh you know like the whole back section of the church is ignored so I, I just keep telling, um, I just can't help saying how the church doesn't care about the young people. And, and, and also, you know, the church, the pastors are mostly critical, like uh, they're always pointing the fault of the young people and say like, you know, the, the youth are not so interested and all. And, and uh, I'm kind of putting the blame back on them saying, um, you know, the church is not doing enough to engage the young people. And then I, uh, then somebody says something from the sermon, which I feel is more like a personal opinion, something I, I point that out saying like this person said, and, and these are his friends mostly or people he respects or looks mm -hmm. up to. So I feel that way he gets offended. Uh, mm -hmm. like someone says something and I end up saying like that person shouldn't have said that or or could have said it in a better way or something like that and then he, he then we get into an argument of like no this is that's like so he he tries to defend that person and uh, and I understand and I'm not attacking again I'm not attacking the person I'm just attacking um, I'm, I'm seeing a problem I'm seeing a problem that what comes out from the pulpit what comes out from the church leadership is is only for you know, a few people, and and I, my constant plea, or my 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 burden is that we're losing the my generation and and the generation below me, um, and I, yeah, and and I think that's that's my every time I bring that out, uh, mm -hmm. and that's when we get into a debate. So so what I see is that you've observed something in church that. Uh, uh, and, and you have your understanding of it. And when you bring that out to your father, um, uh, he he's probably unable to take it objectively and take it more as an attack towards him and, and his, uh, his thoughts. Okay. So have you identified or have you looked at what 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 does it make your father feel or what do you think it makes your father feel when you bring about, I'm just using the word judgments here, okay? When you bring about these judgments against his friends or against certain things that is being said about the pulpit or the very uh, course of the entire service, what do you feel your father feels? Uh, so, <laughs> my father often likes to quote uh, this, I don't know, so he heard, he, it, it's one of the U.S. presidents, it's like, ask not the, ask not what the country can do for you, but what you can do for the country or something like that. So he, he always mm -hmm. likes to quote that where, you know, he, he keeps uh, quoting about what I can do for the church or what we can do instead of what the church mm -hmm. can do for us. So I think, so one is, 
now now that i think i think he i'm 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 in some ways is like maybe where i get offended is i probably i want him or yeah him to understand that the ownership maybe him to take the ownership or or even acknowledge that the ownership is on the church leaders and uh, he doesn't seem to fully agree that the ownership is with the church but it's rather individual so i and yeah i think so he he wants me to um also yeah i don't know so it's i probably it's more like he wants me to take ownership of my own attendance in the church and just be there no matter what the church does but i i just be accountable and i just show up and uh, be even um if uh, yeah and and um so i i i f- yeah I, i i don't know if i'm able to show him Th- this this part is confusing pastor because um it, i think i i think i it is something to do with owning the problem like who's who should take accountability for the problem and um to me i think every time i try to put the accountability on him or the leadership uh that's where he feels uh it's not their accountability but it should be uh, the accountability of uh, the individual okay so so i think you yeah you you clarified something you you feel that your father thinks that uh accountability should be individual should be on the individual themselves and it is their responsibility to fulfill that accountability whereas you think that the that the leadership should be accountable for what they say and what they do yeah is on that- the church on like on be with um the leadership and the church to think about engaging everyone and not just a few people or not just themselves uh whereas my dad thinks like it's on me mm. and everyone else whom i'm speaking for that they should take the accountability of being engaged mm. um so mm-hmm. if every time i i try to suggest like maybe we should try this music or or this form uh mm-hmm. as times my dad has told me something like um like when when i've pointed out like um, something along the lines of young people are not attracted to come to church or something along those lines and he's like if if jesus can't attract uh, young people then nothing else can so even if you put up presentations or or good music if if the gospel and the message can't bring is is not enough then nothing else else will be ever enough so people should realize that and come on their own and while i agree to that to some extent but i also feel like the church should put in extra conscious effort and not just be so traditional mm. things mm-hmm. mm. so what i again hear you saying is that your father and you have opposing thoughts about how you engage with the larger community your father feels it is the responsibility of every member to join in to find uh, a way to to um, engage with what's happening in church whereas you you have a different thought that uh, whoever is up on the pulpit should be responsible for those um, for, for an entire so so we have two opposing beliefs here samuel right yes yes boss yeah okay yes. right so, so i think we've understood that okay now how much do you think that you know you your the, the belief that you've had and your father's belief uh belief uh do you feel that is that there is an attempt to influence so what's happening here is you're attempting to influence his belief he's attempting to influence your belief is that right um i think i think so i'm not sure if he's attempted to influence my belief um i think maybe not attempt but hoping to see a sense or or some value in the beliefs that either of you hold yeah right and yeah. that's where I'm that's where the entire struggle comes. yeah i'm definitely trying to influence his belief i'm i'm trying mm. to get him to see uh that you know the church should change its ways mm-hmm. um 
but I, he's not I, so he's he's just not accepting that and i think that also calls uh, that that causes so that, that so i see that leads you to frustration and and some sense of a uh, you know uh, does that does is that what's bringing that that uh, sense of criticality in your father uh, criticality towards your father that that you get upset that he doesn't see the sense of belief and brings about that sense of criticality in you and i i don't get so much upset uh, but i end up upsetting him more and and i feel bad uh, mm. uh, so I, i i think i see it objectively and i can completely see where he's coming from you know we have a mm. gap he 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 like i am a millennial person he didn't grow up with, like he still struggles to use his smartphone and things like that so so i can see mm. him and uh, the rest mm. of you know so i i kind of empathize with them mm mm-hmm. uh, but uh, i at the same time i i can't bear uh, like i can't uh, somehow uh, go to church and and not mm. uh, and just keep quiet and not talk to my dad about it mm mm-hmm. mm okay so what i what i see finally right now is samuel you would like to um what you would like to do is to stay respectful and um less critical about your father you would like to hold on towards uh towards your understanding of what church means to you and you would also like to in some way help your father see that one this has nothing to do with your personal relationship with him and this is something that you would you would you consider as important for you and this is this is nothing to do with how you relate to to your dad so are are these have have we got an understanding of this yeah yeah yes, okay. yes all right okay so you know this this i know like we've we've really cut this short but this this actually helps to explore we have figured these these things out okay that there is a difference in the way that there is a belief that uh, samuel has there's a belief that his father has and what's coming in conflict is the mismatch of these beliefs okay and what we are, what we want to help samuel as he said is to be able to hold on to the belief he he feels about about the church but maybe what we need to really explore and work on is would it be necessary that he has to when i say the word push or to influence his father with his own belief okay is that necessary to do and that's what we we would probably do further on you know in sessions further on is it really necessary to push the belief that you have to your father um how is it that you can be uncritical or respectful of your father even though there are these different separate beliefs that you have so that becomes you know getting into the goal setting and into the next phase okay i hope i hope we were able to i mean samuel i think i need to hear from you what did you, what did did you were you able to get some clarity about how you need to go forward with with the issue you i know you haven't got a a, a solution yet that that you haven't but right. at least through your communication through your conversation has it become more clear about what is the problem for you and how is it that you would like to take it forward was that is that something i at least i think you know give us your feedback as to what you felt sure pastor thank you um so um so so i think there are two level of problems pastor um you know there was sometimes i i, I was in the role play mode and sometimes i was actually in 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 uh, it's it, it's a it's it's not to that extreme i i just i exaggerated a few things yeah 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 <laughs> uh, um uh so the the issue with my father uh, reconcile i mean i think that's that's a surface level problem because on uh, something i i don't know um but pass if i may if i may i'm just adding a few things like um these things didn't come up but now that i think of it uh you know like on on more, like i i do have a very healthy um relationship with my dad like we joke about we talk we go for walks and things like that so so probably that didn't come up it's only regarding my church attendance 
So that's that that's a surface level problem um, that that uh, that I'm dealing with, which I feel is uh, like you know my, like we we have some small disarguments, but rest of the days we are fine. It's it's not a bitter feeling that stays with us for quite long. It's on your comes on a Sunday, it's gone by Monday morning. So something like that. Uh, but the but um, the 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 bigger issue with me is still about me being critical about um, the church and and me also sometimes like I on most days most times I'm, I I know my criticality is uh, rightly placed like you know because it's it, the intentions are right uh, it's it's for more youth engagement it's for more like it's for the church to have more authentic uh, worship at least at least that that's what i'm thinking so my intentions are right it's, it's not um, i'm i'm not just being critical but i have these suggestions and other thoughts also um uh, but also i think the problem is like um with me is uh you know uh this 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 like should but even though it's rightly even if it even though it has the right intentions uh should I like I, and I think you brought that out which is like you know should I hold on like like should I hold on to those beliefs um, or or because sometimes I, I get the feeling that I may be wrong like I shouldn't be so like I, I am empath empathetic but sometimes I have these thoughts of like you know like th th that maybe I'm wrong and then but then that doesn't sit well with it. I know that I'm not wrong you know yet. but but again sometimes like you know, um, they are God's anointed people, um, and they are, uh, you know, running a church, and they've done a lot of good work. So I, like, who am I to be critical of them? So, like, mm -hmm. you know, not if, like when I go to church, like, and I come back resentful of being critical. Like, I, I, I there's a sense of like, like, I'm, I'm on one end, I'm being critical, but on the other end, I'm, I'm also this internal conflict. Like, you know, it's, it's a problem with me. Uh, that I'm not able to appreciate enough uh, what people mm. are doing and I'm, I'm being so so that's 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 the bigger issue that I'm having and, mm. and um, that didn't come out so much and I'm, I'm yeah. but but given the time I think we had a very crunch time and 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 all of that uh, and and there were places where I realized I I I, I was consciously holding back because holding I thought back. It'll, mm. it'll come out Maybe if it was an authentic counseling I would have expressed this like what I'm saying right now but I was hoping it'll come out. <laughs> Which yeah. which you did right now, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I yeah. think you brought it out really well. So your yeah. conflict right now is, you um you, you know you're 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 in a place where you where you want to be careful as to how critical you are. You want to be you want to be critical in a good sense to bring about good change, but not have a spirit of criticality in the way that you deal with a person. Uh, you know, you deal with your father or whoever it is. So you want to have a balance of how you want to institute that criticality, to be careful to bring it about for a general good, but of course not to harm or to hurt or to disrespect a specific person. So that's what you are looking at. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so this is you know, a real small little sample of how it is done. You know, this actually, this kind of a conversation can keep going for maybe two, three sessions till you're actually able to really get a gist of it. I mean, I think Samuel already has a very clear understanding of what he wants. So it was much, much easier to take it on. But a lot of people, when they come to you, they have no clue as to what they want, you know. So to just be able to tease out the problem, to come to the basic need of, of the individual in itself can take so much of time okay great all right so shall we just uh, have a break of 10 minutes it's 10 58 on my clock we'll come back at 11 8 and we'll, we'll move on to class from there thank you so much samuel thank you very thank much you.